How's it going everyone, it's Gadgets Boy, welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be taking a look at the ASUS ZenBook 17 Fold. And as the name suggests, it's a foldable laptop or is it a foldable tablet? Well, let me know what you think in the comments below. So this is a 17.3 foldable laptop. So once it's fully extended, it's a 17.3 OLED uh, display. And once it's folded, it turns into a 12.5 inch notebook, which you can carry around. And if you pair it up with a keyboard like this one, a Bluetooth keyboard like this one, you'll be able to use the keyboard on there. But if you don't have the keyboard, that's, that's actually bundled with it anyway. But if you don't use the keyboard, you can also use the on-screen uh, keyboard as well, which is pretty neat. But let's talk about the design first and see what's actually all around this. Some of you may have, may have seen this on the channel before in form of a short form video uh, that did a lot of views. And since then, I've been trying to get it in to actually review it and see what yeah, it can actually do because 10 seconds, 15 seconds or so with one of these doesn't really tell you, the, doesn't really paint the full picture. So let's start with the design. All around the tablet itself, there's no doubt this is a premium device. This will set you back around 3,300 pounds at the point of this review, uh, which is a lot of money for this. And I think this is something that early adopters would actually go for. It's not something that your everyday user would buy because I think it's still the first generation. So I would wait for the second one to see what they've learned based on the usage on this one. So around the device, like I was saying, it looks very premium. You've got bits of leather material on there. I don't know if it's real leather or not, uh, but it's got that nice leather sort of material finishing on there. Even on the keyboard itself, on the, by the trackpad, it's got that nice uh, leather looking finishing. It's not real leather on this one, but uh, it's got that same sort of design on there to keep that leather look uh, going all around it. Looking on the right side of the device, we have a USB-C port, which is a Thunderbolt uh, 4. We've got a uh, combo jack for 3.5mm combo jack, which is a headphone and your audio as well. You've got battery indicator lights on there, and you've got your heat dissipation vent, which is also all around the lid of the top half of the uh, ZenBook uh, 17 fold. You don't have your power button with, a with an indicator light on there as well. And then when we look up top, we have uh, your volume controller right up top. We have some more heat dissipation area, so heat vent. So this can stay cool under pressure. And then you have another USB-C port, which is another Thunderbolt uh, 4 port. In the, in the box itself, in the packaging, you get a sleeve as well, which I actually don't have with me here, that's at home. Um, it's a nice little leather sleeve, which makes, keep this nice and secure because this is a very expensive, uh, this is an expensive product. And you also get 65 watts charging brick in the box as well. Talk about charging, this is a 75 watt hour battery in there. This has a 75 watt hour battery in there, which will last you all day long. Uh, ASUS quoted around 10 hours or so, uh, but I think all day use on this for your work whilst you're on the go is more than enough. And uh, you might not even even have to carry a charger in that case. On the other side of the device, there's nothing there, just another little grill area there for the speakers and stuff like that. So actually what I'm confusing for some, some of the heat dissipation might actually be some of the speaker grills on here. This is, I've uh, got Harman Kardon sound system, which sounds fantastic for a foldable laptop, which is kind of interesting. Uh, if we take a look closer look at the hinge as well, it's pretty cool that the way they've done it, it's nice and discreet. Uh, but when you look under that leather there on the back, you can see the way that the screen sort of moves to, and then the leather moves to give way for the folding mechanism there. So they've measured it quite all right, so it stays nice and tight on there, which is pretty cool. On the back on the other side, we have a kickstand, which is nicely integrated into the laptop as well. You can easily just push that out, and, you, and then that allows you to have this in full tablet mode, so you can have it almost like a TV in front of you. That takes that 17 inch mode to the next level. So you almost have a full on desktop with you on the go. So this can morph into different things. You can, one minute you got it in sort of like tablet mode like this, you can flip it up and have it in portrait mode like this and then close the kickstand, you can fold it up and have it like that, like a book, almost like a laptop. So you can place that down, place your keyboard on there and then you get to type away just like you would on a laptop. It adds a bit of bulk onto it once you place a laptop so you can see how thick it is on the side there, uh, but that doesn't really take away from the cool design that you've got here. Once you place the keyboard on there though, that there's a, uh, something that I notice is it does kind of uh, obst obstruct your, when you're trying to press some of the icons that are below. So when you're trying to tap, say Internet Explorer or sorry, Edge, this is, that's showing my age. Uh, it's, it kind of obstructs your your finger from tapping that icon there, but you can still tap, tap it away, but the keyboard, uh, keyboard does that. On the keyboard itself, you have a USB-C port uh, to charge the keyboard, so it doesn't do more than that. It's not an extra port, uh, so you have a power switch on there as well. And this should last you longer than the, the tablet itself because uh, it doesn't take much power. Uh, and it's connected via Bluetooth to the tablet itself. Up top on the front, we have uh, your webcam. It's a five megapixel HD webcam, so you can use that for video calls, Zoom calls on the go. And this also has infrared there as well for logging in, so you can easily use your face to log in. And it works really well in the dark, in the daytime, and 
person like me with a darker skin, it works as well. It doesn't have any issues there. Just looks at the eyes and picks it up and recognizes that's you. Log in uh, very fast. The keyboard itself is very good. It's got nice travel on it as well. And typing on it is actually a joy. I love typing on this thing. And the, the only thing that I've got with it, the qualms that I've got with it, would be to do with the trackpad. It's not that precise. It's got a bit of lag on it sometimes. So when you're moving around, you're sort of moving uh, over movements to get to where you need to get to. So I'll, most of the time I end up just touching the screen and tapping where I actually need to go. Let's talk more about this display though. It's not gloss like uh, some of the latest foldable devices out there today. Uh, this is actually a plastic sort of material which means lots of glare. So um, as you can see here, you can see all the glare going on on the screen there. And you can sort of see the, the crease as well when it's off, but once you're using it and you just look at it the whole time, uh, there's less uh, cre uh, crease noticeable. So you just forget that it's there basically, but there's still crease. But again, let's give them some credit for this. This is some sort of engineering uh, marvel. And also, man, you can't really blame it for that. And it's, it's the first generation. So maybe the next one and the one after that will look better without the crease, who knows. I also think it's pretty incredible the way they've managed to design it. So once you place your keyboard on the screen, you can actually close, the, you can still fold it away as well with the keyboard placed sandwiched between it as well. I think that's pretty smart, that's pretty incredible. It just means you don't have to carry that keyboard in some sort of extra sleeve or anything like that. You can put it on there, put it together, and you're good to go. That's, this is quite weighty as well. When you pick it up, it's got a bit of weight on it. <laughs> Uh, it's, no, it's no slacker when it comes to the size and the weight on this thing. More on the display though, you're looking at 1920 by 2560 on here for the resolution and it will give you 60 hertz of refresh rate. Uh, that doesn't really matter really for browsing, that's just a standard now 60 hertz. You don't need any more than that for what this can do. Um, I've tried to throw some stuff at it, which I'll talk about more in uh, performance mode uh, when it comes to performance that is. Uh, and it's, it's, mm, it's not the best when it comes to performance, but back to the display. It's very sharp, it's vibrant, it's 100% DC IP3, and uh, uh, it just looks really good when editing photos on here. It looks really good, color accuracy is up there. So no problems there at all. So if, whether you type in, browsing the web, whatever you're doing, you've got that there. You've got different modes. You've got big, big screen real estate to play with either in this nice laptop mode, you know, smaller display, or you can have it wide and have a massive screen in front of you to browse the web, watch movies, do whatever you want on the go, and it's just really nice. For the performance, you have up to 12th gen Intel Core i7 processor in there, it's a U series, so it's quite old. You also have the Intel XC graphics in there, this is Intel Evo certified, and for the RAM in there, you have 16 gigabytes of uh, LPDDR5, and you have up to a terabyte NVMe SSD in there, Samsung uh, own SSD in there, which works really well. It's very fast, very smooth. Uh, there's no problem when it comes to the RAM, able, being able to handle different mot uh, multiple applications at the same time, but lower level applications. So I'm talking browsing the web, I'm talking maybe having Microsoft Word at the same time. You can even split the screen on this, have it in different modes. You can have three sort of screen set up. You can have screen side by side, up to you what you want to do. So moving on to the nitty gritty of that performance, throwing um, some benchmarks on there. So PC Mark 10, had a good score when it comes to everyday work, everyday task. There's no problems there at all. When it comes to the graphics though, it's where it starts to, uh, you can start to see the crack. So if you try to edit videos on this on Adobe Premiere, you see all the glitch on there. I even tried to play Apex Legend on it and uh, absolutely not. It's just, it crashed a few times. So this is definitely not a gaming laptop. It's more of a workforce laptop, but an expensive one at 3,300 pounds. So do bear that in mind, it's a lot of money. Uh, so back to that performance. Um, in terms of 3, 3D Mark, it scores below everything else. It's not the best when it comes to graphics, but when it comes to the processing performance on PC Mark 10, it does quite well in terms of comparison to Office laptops. So this I would place in a bracket of an Office equipment. So this is something that you use to do your Office work on the go and less of something that you use to edit videos or play games. It's not that kind of laptop. More on that performance as well. Um, something I'm not sure whether it's to do with the software itself in terms of Microsoft and being able to, uh, you know, uh, scale different apps for this uh, screen format. I don't know if that's that or the actual processor itself, but a lot of the time it glitches when you try to rotate it. It's not that, it's not that quick into morphing into different uh, format that you've got it in. So whether, whether you're going from laptop like this to go into a full screen mode, you see that little delay when you're trying to rotate it and stuff like that. Also, when you play some games on there, it, it, it just puts it into that center of the screen. So it doesn't know what to do with it. Once you put your keyboard back on it, then it rescales back to whatever it wants to be. But before that, it just stays in the middle and it's quite annoying that uh, the software doesn't know what to do in that kind of scenario. But I think other than that, this is the kind of laptop that I'd recommend for <laughs> I'm not even sure, like early adopters who just fancy something that's fancy, like a foldable laptop. 
and I think because anyone else who buys this, the novelty will wear off pretty quickly and you start to regret your spend, which is £3,300. It's a lot of money to be buying uh, for this. I can think of so many other laptops on the market right now that you can save money on and get better performance compared to this one from Dell, HP, uh, you know, Acer and so on. So, uh, but yeah, this is something for the early adopters. And if you do get something like this, Make sure it's something you get for workforce, not for gaming, not for video editing on the go. You can edit photos on this on Lightroom. It's not too bad. Uh, but yeah, other than that, that's all this is good for, in my opinion. But over to you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this something you'd buy? Is this something just for the novelty? Would you shed out £3,000 plus for something like this? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, if this is your first time around here, please do subscribe. Smash the bell notification as well so you get notified every time there's a new video up on the channel like this one. And I shall see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.